Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. So the US market is struggling to break above 18,112 just as the commodity market route continues, uh, but most other global equity markets are looking relatively stable with eyes still turning to the US dollar and potential rate hikes in September, with the latest Fed member uh, coming out saying he reckons about a 50% chance of an increase in September. And that US dollar um, strength increase interest rate discussion point is what is one of the many factors impact in the commodity markets but China and the worry about Chinese slowdown um, is affecting not just commodities but also uh, some of the APAC regions as well specifically Australia um, where there's a lot of people there are worried about the uh, the impact of lower commodity prices and demand from China impacting that region especially with so much debt that they have over in Oz during the good years they didn't keep so much of that cash back that they that they've made when most other regions were getting hit hard by the credit crunch in Australia were running high because of China and squirrel too much of that away. So that's one thing that uh, some traders are looking at a lot of the APEC regions and what's going to happen if the uh, the Chinese route starts off again. Now it's been stable the last couple of sessions, so we'll have to see how that goes. So anyway, having a look at the UK 100 now, um, you can see long laid tips of these candles are indicative of selling pressure just below that 55 period SMA, but we are managing to keep our head above 67.72. Uh, which is the level we've been talking about for a number of days, and that's acting as a potential short-term support. Now, the MACD is close to crossing the zero line, which would be a buying signal from a technical perspective, whereas the slow stochastic and the RSI are not yet overbought, so there's no reversal signals there. So, in theory, if we get ahead above the 55 period SMA, that could open up a pathway towards 69.07. Moving on to Japan, 225. Japan underlying market was actually closed yesterday, but with dollar yen now hitting, well, it was almost 124.50, 124.60, getting close to 125. Actually, uh, we are we are just close to major resistance on the dollar yen FX cross, and you can see that the Japan 225 is just pushing up now, and we're at we're near multi-year highs again, 20,868. We hit it uh, towards the end of June. We're close there just now. We've actually managed to have about nine days continuous gains. Obviously, we've still got today to go in Japan. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we can break on higher uh, on that F on that on that pair. So let's have a look at dollar yen. Uh, we mentioned obviously major potential resistance 124.42. So we break our um, our neck above there, and we're looking at 126. And uh, after that, be 129. So. Uh, obviously, we had a massive push last time we broke through it, only to sink right back down again. Uh, let's see if dollar yen can do it. But a lot of things seem to be in play right now for dollar yen. Um, US rate talk, um, why the Japanese yen is doing, the fact that there's still an ace in the hole for Bank of Japan, Governor Kuroda, if they need to um, devalue the yen further to be more competitive. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why a lot of people are looking at dollar yen. Uh, obviously, it's dependent a lot on the fundamentals, but uh, it's an interesting FX pair to look at. So moving on to best Texas crude broke, uh, closed below fifty dollars for the first time in a long time yesterday. We haven't done that since uh, since April this year. Uh, so potential support forty nine forty. Uh, if we break down below that, then you're probably looking at the tips maybe around about forty six, forty five, ninety. Um, but we're not there yet, but certainly the fundamental factor of West Texas crude is China slowing down, Iranian sanctions are being lifted, could be a new glut, Saudi Arabia production levels at the highest they've ever been. So um, there's a lot of reasons to uh, to be wary of uh, of long West Texas crude, but uh, we are quite close to potential support, and obviously it can be quite volatile, so just be careful there. So looking at gold, um, gold actually had a terrible day yesterday following that mini flash crash that we had. 900,000 lots sold versus 30,000 lots at daily average in a two-minute period in the Chinese session yesterday morning. That caused uh, gold to drop 4% down below, uh, we're in about 10, uh, 1,072. Uh, now, we ended up closing a good bit away from that level, and we managed to push up a little bit higher this morning, but to be honest, I think now that we've made this low here, uh, from a psychological, technical perspective, um, we might get a bit of a bounce there. But I think uh, you know the jury's out with gold and, and being bullish, especially with potential U.S. rates being coming back into focus, and um, inflation is not very high as ever. And people identify gold as a hedge against inflation, and um, you know people's interest rates, interest rates, interest rates over in the U.S. So that what happened yesterday wasn't specifically related to interest rates. It was just speculative traders pushing the price down but 
there's no getting away from the fact that U.S. rates are very much the focus uh, of many traders' eyes now. Now that Greece uh, has kind of gone gone to the background. So moving on to your dollar, your dollar's drifting down lower. One spot zero seven eight six potential support. We talked about this a lot. We're back down there again. Other technicals indicate that this could still uh, have further room for maneuver. Uh, with one spot zero five. Uh, 24 being the next potential support should we get a convincing break and we finish up with GBP USD we've actually broken below one spot 56 now we're almost getting a death cross on moving averages that'd be a negative technical signal the MACD could cross back through the zero line that'd be negative and uh, the other technical indicator is relatively neutral now there isn't a huge amount of economic data uh, we've got public finances today actually tomorrow we've got the NPC minutes um, so that that could be interesting. Usually there's a statement that comes out there as well from the Bank of England talking about their, how they voted on rates and everything else. And then uh, UK rates are kind of coming in, coming in through an element right now as well. Later on tomorrow, we've got existing home sales and the petroleum data updates. And then finishing up on Thursday, you've got retail sales in the UK, again, good for cable, and then uh, US employment claims, finishing up with Eurozone Consumer Confidence Index, or CCI. And uh, as ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of the late going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.